My name is Casey Carl. I have the privilege of serving as the clerk for the great city of Minneapolis. And with me this morning is my colleague, Grace Wachlerowitz, who is the Director of Elections and Voter Services for the city of Minneapolis. Together, we're part of a team of more than 2,500 men and women who are working every day now and continuing through and after election day to ensure that all of Minneapolis voters have fair, free, and equitable access to the ballot box in this year's 2020 presidential election. I'd like uh, to thank everyone for joining us this morning as you help us get trusted, accurate information out to our voters. We consider that an extension of our job in serving the people of Minneapolis. It is our motto in the elections division that we will do everything in our power to help our voters cast their ballot. Part of that mission then is ensuring that our voters have accurate, trusted information that they can rely upon. This year is certainly thrown a number of challenges at us, not least of which is the impact of a global health pandemic. Uh, due to the number of unknown factors associated with the COVID-19 virus, we have been and we will encourage voters to continue voting early by mail where they have that opportunity and choose to do so. Voting early by mail will help protect them. It will help us to minimize the potential for long lines close and unnecessary contact, and of course, the potential for virus spread on election day. So this morning, it's our goal to provide some updated statistics on our early vote turnout, to provide some high level information about how that sets us up for likely turnout on election day at the polls, and to discuss various options that voters have in order to participate in this election and to discuss resources that are available to them from our office. This past Tuesday, October 13th, was the pre-registration deadline for voters to register in advance of this year's election. We can now report that since that cutoff date, we have a total of 271,049 pre-registered voters. Of course, that number will change because in Minnesota, we give voters every access to participate, which means they can continue to register and get their ballot now through and on election day. But we do have, as of that cutoff, about 271,000 pre-registered voters. Uh, with that number then, we definitely know that things will change. It represents a growth of about 12,517 registered voters since our August primary. So we have had a significant growth in the number of pre-registered voters that are uh, ready to take part in the election for November. In order to set some expectations, we have done some data comparisons between the pre-registration cutoff in 2016 and the pre-registration cutoff in 2020 to provide a baseline comparison between those two presidential elections. In 2016, at the point of pre-registration cutoff, Minneapolis had issued a total of 22,820 absentee ballots. This year, by comparison, we have already issued a total of 155,195 absentee ballots. That's an increase of approximately 580% in the number of absentee ballots that have been issued by the same point in time in the 2016 presidential compared to the 2020 presidential. In 2016, at the time of our pre-registration cutoff, Minneapolis had received a total of 12,677 completed absentee ballots. That's the number of ballots that voters had returned back to us. This year, by comparison, we've already received a total of 80,416 completed absentee ballots. That's a difference of more than 530% between the two presidential elections. In fact, with 20 days remaining before election day, Minneapolis is more than 35% toward the goal of passing the total number of votes that were cast in the 2016 presidential election. And that doesn't anticipate turnout we expect at the polls on election day. Each night, the elections division has provided a statistical snapshot on social media for that day's early turnout. 
As of last evening, we reported that we had accept or received 82,941 vo uh, ballots from Minneapolis voters that had been returned to us during this early voting period. So we are very pleased, obviously, with the turnout that we've received thus far. We do have a map that shows and illustrates where that turnout is coming from across the city. You can see the darker colors reflect more turnout from those precincts, but it's fairly evenly spread across the city. Voters are very engaged. Voters are tuned in. They're paying attention and they're turning out at record numbers. At that point, I'd like to uh, introduce my colleague again, Ms. Wachlerowitz. She's going to speak through the options that voters have in terms of participating and also some of those trusted information resources that our office and other election offices are making available to voters. When she's done, we'll be happy to answer questions that you might have. Thank you, Casey. As he had mentioned, my name is Grace wachler and I'm the Director of Elections and Voter Services here in the City of Minneapolis. We are ready to, ac to have access to everyone in the city to cast that ballot, and we are expanding that access through many modes. First and foremost, our first priority is mail. If you haven't applied for a mail ballot yet, do so. We urge by next Tuesday, October 20th. If you want to return it during the USPS through the mail, do so by October 27th. If you're not sure that you want to actually mail that ballot, we are expanding our access to hand deliver those mail ballots to fully staffed locations throughout the city. Currently, here at our Early Vote Center, our mail bell drop off in our operations here at 980 East Hennepin, you can do it here. As of Tuesday, we opened up the Minneapolis Convention Center as an option for voters to drop off their ballots. And starting next Monday, we will be expanding that to an additional nine sites or a total of 11 sites in which Minneapolis voters will have the opportunity to hand deliver those mail ballots and be accepted, meaning we will ensure that it is properly correct information on it, secure it, and ensure that it will be counted. We do have a handout that will be provided to all of us here at this press conference. It is also on our website, men.minneapolis.gov, for all the information on the dates and times that these drop-off locations is. This is a very, very tiny little handout, but you can see that it's throughout the whole city. So it is convenient for all our citizens to drop off that ballot. If you choose to vote in person for whatever reason, if you need additional assistance or just that comfort level of putting that ballot into the ballot box, we are also expanding that service as well. In addition to our site here at the Hennepin Avenue location, on October 27th, we will expand it to two locations one in the north and one in the south. North is our regular urban league location that we've been at for many years. And for the southern location, we have a new location, which our partners in our park board, uh, Minneapolis Park and Rec Organization, we are using the Longfellow Recreation Center. So you can see before election, you have many opportunities to cast that ballot. If you choose to vote on election day, we will be ready for you as well. We have relocated nine, pre nine excuse me, 50 precincts, consolidated that so that we are safe and secure, no, in, um, no concern as far as large groups, 
big buildings, for example, like our schools will be closed and they will be precincts. So if you need to, we will be ready to serve you on election day, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Finally, I want to assure you that it is our priority to ensure that you have the most correct and accurate information. I am proud to say that we are certified as a trusted source. For example, for our social media, you'll see the blue check mark. If you want reliable information, please go to the election offices. The county and the state have the accurate information to provide all voters, whether it's here in the city of Minneapolis or across the state. In addition, we want to make sure that you get current, accurate information on a weekly basis. We would be happy to have weekly press conferences on Monday mornings to provide you with current information on how well the progress is going in preparation for election, as well as the statistics, the phenomenal numbers that we are experiencing as far as our voters casting those ballots. So with that, I will turn it over to you for any questions you may have.